and welcome back to a personal code of conduct. I am Dio, and as usual, this is the epitome of mediocrity. But there's an improvement. I said I was going to read Atomic Habits, Habits by James Clear, and I did. I did. I actually finished the book, but I don't remember anything I read. So there's that. So I decided to just do the mediocre thing and go through like articles reviewing the book. But I assure everyone listening that I did read the book. Like, I'm not lying. I did read it. So we'll be here with our mediocre podcast. And as usual, Sunday is going to be loud because you're hearing like churches, stuff in the background generally. It's going to be fine. We are living our lives of mediocrity. And I think I've decided to be serious about doing the whole what's the word? Um having a weekly song at the end of it i don't give a damn if spotify flags me for like um what's the word <laughs> copyright claims but like who cares i'm not doing this for money so what else oh yeah with time to start the uh the whole idea of mediocrity the atomic habits podcast it's not like the atomic habits podcast it's more like i'm trying to, to convince myself that i have finished a book not me completely not finishing seneca's letters not me completely not finishing the principles of existentialism and being a horrible adult but here yeah, like this is me deciding that i have made a conclusion i have made a decision and i have fulfilled that thing so first things first we go through google and like do the first research the first like first page results because i'm not going to pass the first page so like I basically googled atomic habits impl- implementation in real life because I was like, oh, when I finished reading the book, I was like so inspired. I literally got the habit tracker, more habit tracker data. So I literally got the habit tracker and I decided that okay, I'm going to be like a useful human being and track my every move. Then I was like, fuck no, I'm not doing that. Then I've decided to go to the first Google page of real life implementation of atomic habits and the first one was how i implement atomic habits by raj smith next one is nine atomic habits that will change your life i don't give a damn about this stupid website book summary atomic habits by james Clare. another book summary so who did i choose to end up picking because i went through like a couple of these and i ended up picking a couple of people and i was like I feel like I'd be able to do like a proper article reaction. I know this entire podcast has turned into an article reaction podcast, but it's turning out fine. I saw this one Indian chick and she just wanted to talk about like how Cheryl implemented Atomic Habits. I was like, fuck no, but it was fun to read because she had a lot of like memes in it. But like, why? Okay, I think I might end up using it after I'm done with the one that's properly annotated. I don't know why people don't like annotate the structure there. What's the word? their uh, articles now this stuff does not what's important atomic habits what are they and how can we incorporate them if you're the type of person interested in self-improvement blah 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 the power of habits this person that finally goes to the what are atomic habits first of all what are habits and what makes them ad- um, atomic now i think i'm trying to make this a reaction style stuff and start that like when i had this entire when i first read the book and my opinion of like a habit what are my habits as a person um i'm okay let's just say that as from august to this place i became an individual who works out i also became an individual who doesn't eat like a nine-year-old most of the time and i found out that thinking of yourself as the kind of person who does something rather than i'm trying to do something is a faster way to get by it then obviously I, then i read the atomic habits book and i was like okay yes my theory is correct thank you for corroborating my theory but it turns out that you don't do this for everything in every aspect of your life you realize that some things you always like i'll tell myself i'm going to do it and there's some things you just be like oh this is how i envision myself as as the kind of person who does this or the kind of person who does that and you just go ahead and do it which is something that you don't have for all your habits so it's very important that you have like a conscious mindset that okay this is what i'm doing this is how i'm going to make a certain habit a particular lifestyle or what have you so atomic habits are like small things every day and i noticed one thing like i noticed that if i didn't immediately like put on workout clothes i wasn't going to work out that day if i didn't immediately go downstairs i wouldn't lift heavy weights and i'd stick to my bands which is like the habit the systems leading in place before i work out or i noticed that if i didn't like i depended so much on wanting to see something before i started to draw and i also have this annoying habit of wanting to be good at everything which is i know that is taking an exercise in creativity when she's used to be analytical her entire life but like deal with it i'm becoming an adult 
Next, the basic the basics of how information rely on manipulating the feedback loop. Now, I really like the idea of how it was like you have a cue, and once you've noticed the cue, what is what is the craving that comes after the cue? What is the response to that craving, and what is the reward? I don't know. I think I there's one thing that I've noticed, like especially when I was like trying to diet down, like last year, I realized that I'm lazier than I am hungry. If there's food in front of me, I will eat it. But if there is no food, I am often too lazy to go outside. So if I go outside, it means I really, really wanted that thing, and de- therefore I deserve that thing. But like my laziness trumps my desire to eat rubbish, which is like my m- modification of the cue craving and response reward. Is this is a question? You either remove the cues out of it, like removing the cues, as in if I'm bored, what what is my response to being bored? Because if because I was never overweight, but if you want to have like that lean, relatively toned physique, you have to dry it down. So it's like, what is your response to being like bored? My best response to being bored is either reading questionable manga or making something questionable in the kitchen. So it was like, I did go on a, like a dramatic questionable manga binge, and I was like, okay, this is not something I'm particularly proud of. There's a reason why that manga is questionable, but. I decided that it's better to try and create and fail because I'm still trying to build a habit of creation. But like that is like an entire phase. So it said like, what am I going to do when I'm bored? I'm not just going to munch on chips because I'm bored. Like that doesn't make any sense. So that's how that was sorted out. <laughs> I think so. Instead of me being like, oh I'm bored, I want to munch chips. I became, oh I'm bored, I want to create something. Or oh I'm bored, like let me go on a walk. Or oh, I'm bored, let me go on like three-hour music bench that's the kind of human being that I became it's not just like it wasn't a matter of like having a goal per se I just wanted a system and my knees to stop paying me like what the fuck what kind of 23 oh the 22 I was 22 at point. what kind of fucking 22 a two-year-old has knees pain in her like seriously like your thighs cannot be that huge um once you understand the feedback loop, let's not. I like the fact that I, I might end up end up just using this particular article because the person breaks it down into like points, and this is making me realize like look at what I thought as I was reading the book, and look at how like I have unconsciously implemented like changing my atomic habits as a person, and how I intend to like consciously make it a thing. Because I will literally go through my habit tracker, and remember this is a personal code of conduct. What worked for Dio will most likely not work for you, because Dio is just being like dramatic and being like, yes, I'm an awesome person. Listen to me. If you like what I say, do what I say. Screw you. Um. So let's go on back to the queue it first breaks out either to queue now if you have a queue or you're trying to change something or produce a desired be- behavior the first thing you need to do is to make it obvious like if you want to create a queue now the queue for me to work out on average is the moment i open my eyes if i wake up and the sun is out it just means my body needed rest so no workout that day but if i open my eyes like my eyes and my usual my, uh, my usual fucking 4 30 or 5 o'clock i'm like get the fuck up and go and work out that is like my cue the opening of your eyes go and wear clothes and leave your room um and also another thing not turning things on i just realized how much like when i moved to this place how much my workouts was centered on the fact that i had a roommate because if i didn't have a roommate i wouldn't work out i'd work out in the room and when i try to work out in the room i'm not that regular but when i have to leave the room because i don't want to be an asshat to somebody who lives with me then i work out more <laughs> which is weird note to self don't make other people part of your routine without their consent next make it attractive some of some mornings i have abs it's attractive enough like that <laughs> make it easy is there anything easy about working out but i'm going to apply this to drawing in the sense that i did get the equipment i did get the pen i did get the, the um, apps and i am following a structured approach as much as i like structure i don't like practice which is very 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 daft and very very funny because i am I'm like things that as somebody who is very analytical and has moved gravitated towards science things throughout her life i'm not used to not being immediately good at stuff i'm not used to not being the best in my class okay kind of i got to university and i was like fuck it i don't want to stress myself to get the first class like ew so like i kind of was pulled out of peggy uni a bit but as somebody who's like has always excelled in the field of like science and math i'm just not used to not being as good at things 
and I'm used to like, my experience with artists is like noticing patterns and copying and everything and that's why I like the approach as to art as a skill but the problem is that I hate practice which is now like uh, you you think an analytical person would be more like into in, into practice, but like I'm more like note taking and annotation than than reference when you want to use utilize that knowledge again, kind of situation. And the thing is, there's that's one thing why I like like the, my career trajectory, the fact that you understand that, especially my take on data science, it's going to be something that I'm going to continue to use every day. Like my knowledge of statistics, coding, and um statistics coding and database management is going to be like my everyday life it's going to be like what i do with myself every day so like i don't have to worry like when i was like in consulting and in quality management i don't have to worry that something i have chosen to learn will stick with me it's like because i do a lot of math like i still fucking remember quadratic equations everybody remembers quadratic equations everybody who did engineering at least and because you used it every day for most of your time so like that's why i i I'm having like the whole like issue with creativity and that kind of mindset because it's going to be something self-propelled that's an, another reason why I aggressively try to focus to push myself directly into the field of like data analytics because I understood that this is something that I want to do like every day so like the need for practice will come from the need for the fulfillment of practice and the improvement of expertise is going to come during my work day so like I need to feel my outside like i need a life outside work obviously but like i need to feel like my life outside work with something so and that became is this recorded in mono oh yeah it's recorded in mono cool i'm trying something new i'm going to attempt to because i used to record in stereo and some dude on the internet was like that's a fucking waste of space so like i'm recording in mono and i don't i think this mic is kind of low but it's working i'm recording in mono with the hope that um, I'm recording in mono with the hope that uh, what's the word I was trying to use? I'm recording that I'll be able to add one of those like podcasty vocal effects, like changing the EQ and normalizing and stuff, and this to sound like more professional rather than somebody in the fucking basement talking. <laughs> basement, no, that you don't have. They're awesome. Then next, make it easy. So the whole this whole tangent about it making it easy, it was as related to drawing, drawing um, because I had found a structured approach but my problem is with the practice so I, my way around it's like especially if you have like somebody who's used to being good at everything and they test practice my way around it is simple I've created like critter um, um, workspaces for each lesson and I realized that I can redo the workspaces as warm-ups every time I want to draw so this way I am practicing and I will get to like the requirement of fixed pages while moving ahead which is awesome like I'm doing the whole deep dive into project stuff and like continue to move on and what have you so having a creator workspace every session just makes it like just makes it make sense next make it satisfying um whatever I create is just satisfying because I think that's the awesome thing about creativity is like the, the object of itself is something that is worth looking at it's something that is worth enjoying worth understanding worth um what's the word it's worth it's worth it's it's worth looking at in a way that you understand where you're going to you understand what you want and the answer is the finishing of that project so let's go to the next day the key concept of atomic habits the habit loop a habit loop is a process the mind and body takes when performing a habit. It starts with a cue that triggers a craving that triggers a response, which leads to an award. Building an environment that's full of obvious cues is the best way to create positive habits. Like we've already gone through that. Now habit stacking. Now if you want to do something like as it relates to others, like for example, my habit stacking is like in the sense that Okay, I know that the moment I finish working out, I have to rinse my face. And once I rinse my face, I have to put on sunscreen. That is a habit sacking. That's like, oh, okay, as I go off and like, do what I have to do every day. So like, it's fucking hard on Saturday. Seeing the fact that I often like wake up fucking late on Saturday and do end up working out. Next is... Wait, let's test if it's not my laptop mic this thing is using. Because <laughs> it'd be funny if it was a laptop mic. Eh, we'll be fine. So... Um, next is compound interest or self-improvement. Okay, I like that's like the entire concept of like the habit stacking thing because you understand that 
if you improve by one percent every day like eventually you're going to see a lot of growth and understanding that a 50 percent improvement from 100 percent to like 150 is just as bad like is is not as is equal to a 33 decline from 150 back to 100 because you need to understand that losses impact you more than wins so it's not just about like okay winning or doing something to the end it's about continuing to do things and immediately bouncing back the moment you had a loss which is like the entire point of the fucking habits but like, who cares uh, next is motivation motivation is i like the fact that a lot of things i kind of agree with james clear because especially when you're moving to things that are not your natural elements like my motivation for data science was um fuck it i don't want to be poor like do you know how much data scientists are on average paid like a hundred and fifty thousand dollars and on average what's the word and even in nigeria as like a beginner data scientist you probably you have a like a juicy salary and there's an opportunity for like global expansion and you live well so i can't say i had like okay i did have like some of the but it aligned with my personal interest and the understanding that human beings are mediocre and completely like not unique and understanding algorithms and how it feeds our desires and how it structures like the way we understand processes the way we decide to act the way we decide to process answers and the way because when i was looking at like the like a simple structure would be like the youtube algorithm it's so funny how i see the same set of people in all my comment sections realizing that oh i'm probably a photocopy of this person this person probably likes fitness get ready with me and um data science videos but this person has the at the background thing of like they need to comment every goddamn day so like looking at realizing that you're seeing the same set of people in every single comment section you go to be understood you understand that you've been putting a customer a youtube customer segmentation youtube understands you as a black female probably of african descent like eh, not black, but, african, but like of west african descent who has feminine interests masculine interests and is in the field of science field of software engineering mostly so like it's common that you expect to see the exact same type of people in all your comments in all your comments se- in common comment sections yeah in comment sections because you realize that you are not unique and that is not a problem it's a very convenience for like corporations especially either um me personally who's moving to the finance industry it's like it's easier it's more convenient to understand people's social behaviors and how to control them and match them to the appropriate financial plans and how like industry moves and markets moves and the lack of human uniqueness even though i know like i know the entire basis of this podcast is understanding that and accepting the fact that human beings are not unique but like we like to delude ourselves that we are somewhat special hence the entire propensity to like religion and faith and what have you but like it'll be fine and again i keep getting a lot of ads for like self-injection contraceptives did i tell these fucking people that i'm interested in in like uh, what's the word in contraceptive injections but then again that it stands to reason i am a young woman who lives in a relatively open city in her early 20s which is something that google knows so it's expected that my app my ads will mostly be surrounded things that a young woman in a relatively open city would desire things like skincare and contraceptive and data so that is basically what google advertises to me because that is the interest of women similar to me oh, fuck i'm describing myself as a woman dio is literally ended up like watching like the 10 alien force like completely like five times yesterday describing herself as a woman wow um let's go back to oh yeah let's go back to the two minute rule do it for at least two minutes already i think i try to make this approach in meditation then modify it to me being ha- mindful how the fuck does somebody be mindful i like the sound of my own voice hence it's like a fucking podcast but the whole two minute rule is helpful with meditation because i'm like sometimes you just like settle down and don't consume content don't even try to create just have an empty mind but, I but the problem i have with meditation is that I entire i end up falling into a loop of existential dread and the meaningless of life which is like eh, normal young on him okay I, I can't use that entire line because like and the entirety of last year my entire streak was like uh, okay not the entirety of last year i had a job like but like three months between nyc and like my first job I, my entire streak was like i am a depressed unemployed human being leave me the fucking alone. <laughs> no i can't use that thing which is like kind of annoying um 
so that is the end of this person's view of the atomic habits now how i've decided to create the atomic habits for like myself is i have a habit tracker like it's the general stuff reminding me to work out reminding me to wash my face reminding me to draw reminding me to study for a project and complete my projects like, i should ignore the fact that my score range of like my general projects have been in the 90s because i know i literally had an entire conversation about like my obsessive like behavior towards competitive function and it's not going to be advisable if i'm going to work eventually in a group which is like what i eventually plan to do but then again it's a personal code of conduct you may not be an asshole like dio you may not but like, seeing as you find yourself here by the great anchor algorithm you probably are an asshole welcome to the club when i get a thousand views and i guess i get the ads um i remember you <laughs> funny how do you use atomic habits to create a better okay then this one is another different article i don't even know the person they put their name on it eh. oh by erica romero Cool. Blah blah blah. Okay, this person. Oh, Atomic Habits by Academia. This person went to the general Q raving response. Blah blah blah, and more blah blah blahs. Okay, this person now decided to decide what, how to like give examples to make it obvious. Eat lunch in a location where you can see your writing set up ready to go, or add a motivational writing quote or poster to a wall where you eat lunch. I don't know. It's like I don't do fucking motivation. Like, isn't that the whole point of the Atomic Habits? like be anti-motivation and make it like a system my entire motivation in life is not to be fucking poor like i have looked into the face of poverty and walked away that's i think that's the one thing that somebody who's middle class or upper middle class like in a third world country you know what extreme suffering look like you know what poverty looks like you've just chosen to ignore it because for the most part your parents have shielded you like i think a lot of people who are coming from shielded households like people on the, the upper middle class to middle class like of like a third world country a very tiny small middle class you know what poverty looks like but you've decided to look you've looked at the depths of poverty and i've looked at the starvation and suffering of malformed and deformed children and you've decided like it can't be me <laughs> which is like the midi the, like we like to like drown ourselves in our uniqueness and tell ourselves that god loves us i think that's like my general reasons for the abandonment of religion is that am i am i trying to delude myself that oh i'm so much deserving of grace in quotes and like a, a malnourished broken child that i'm walking i step over on my way to work like does that make any sense no we're all just like human beings and human beings are kind of all trash which is fine i guess it's all fine then next is um i don't really like this person's writing it's like the exact same thing as the other one but then again you're trying to push it into an article now now this is one i like i like i need to start getting into like a lot of more medium books like next one was like focusing on systems like what is this system like because there's one thing that i really liked in that james clear book it was like yes everybody's goal is to make profits but how are you going to make the profits and it's best like if you're going to make a profit with your systems in place have to be perfect and if you have a perfect system then there's no way in hell you're not supposed to make a fucking profit but if you just keep on thinking i want to make a profit like this is my shake with drawing i know that i want to become a business solution consultant and i want to use as much i want to use um high-end technology to like do that and maybe like focus on the because my general like dedication is either to the finance or political like i eventually see myself being like part of somebody's campaign team in the data science aspect more like a political consultant eventually but like, i want to do well in finance first but you need to understand that yeah that is the goal but what are the systems in place what are the things the people you need to know how do you need to network like there's one thing i know that i am lacking in doing is like networking which is ah oh, fuck i should get better at doing that but like ugh, i keep saying myself bullshit there's still time it's like that's how you wake up fucking 40 year old and you don't know anybody and you're just like this fucking tech like back of this tech human being but then anyway, i'm going to asset management i'll be fine next is focus on systems not goals oh i've already mentioned that outcome process and identity no no this is a better one maybe the other people didn't want to feel like they're figuring so they literally just use the first chapter like this goes on to other chapters it's just, i'm using the articles to try and remind myself like this is what i fucking read <laughs> okay so outcome outcome process identity this is now obviously in chapter two this is concerned with changing the results which is like obviously my result is to become a consultant 
a, a standalone consultant, not a consultant within a firm, then or also like okay, let me go on to a drawing tangent. I always go on drawing tangents. I love the human form. It's like an entire vibe. I like it when people move. I like especially lean bodies. Like people who are like lean to death. I like my entire vibe. I wish I knew how to draw. That's I think that's one of my motivations for drawing because the human body is just amazing in motion. Like it's amazing when like the face is constructing in motion when the body is moving and they're just things I want to create. Like I don't want to have that generic like manga face. Like I want an individual that I'm drawing. Like the thing is I want to have like a fantastical element and merge it to um, portraits as I'm aggressively looking into semi-realism like I want to like I want the person I'm drawing to know that it's them but I want to put them in fantastical situations like I want to put them like in dragon fighting armor I want to make them like um I don't know I, I really need to, I need to look at Yoruba mythology and African mythology generally but like I want to make them like an Aetherian or if just a fucking leaf like or like an Ajay or like just like an entire vibes like create a, a world around a person because there are just some people that you look at them and it's like you look like a fucking warrior like in a high fantasy no- novel and i'm like i wish i could draw which is like I, i'm finally taking that into my own hands by spending money and getting like the equipment to do proper digital drawing but like, i wish spending mo- money was all that you needed to do but okay like, hey, whatever it'll be fine next is process okay i have that's, I think I'm still working on the process. Like right now, I'm currently in training for like the business consulting stuff. And you realize that I won't know until when I get into what's the word, like a program with my coworkers and what have you. And it'll be fine. Then an identity. I have already determined the kind of person that I want to be. And I know, I know, I know, I know. I literally, I know I'm the type of person that do cars work out. Yes, I know I have a good amount of car quads quads the muscle is quads but i am not the kind of person who does ab workouts like the entire the only reason why i give a little bit of definition is because you need to hold your core when you're doing other things but like i don't want ab workouts are stress but like you have to think of yourself as as the kind of person who does certain things and one example uh, he was talking about somebody like was like Deal, you're dealing with smokers and like what is the answer to everything where this thing is going i have a feeling i'm not using the mic but then again the earpiece is connected to this thing doesn't have a mic so whatever so i said i said that like the way things are going you need to understand that um it's cheaper she uses a smoker as an example like rather than saying that i'm trying to quit smoking it's more like oh i don't i'm not a smoker which is a better way to look at it because you just assume that you've gotten to your end goal but it's not necessarily for all of these things but i do describe myself as a data scientist which is awesome i'm not i, I even think i'm going to remove that data enthusiast from my <laughs> from my profile and change it to like straight up data analyst which is fine and everything will be fine implementation intention um yes planning like i really liked this like this chapter three where he kept on talking about oh you're planning you keep creating plans you say you keep wanting to do you put things on paper like that is not really implementation that is an intention to implement and you're not doing anything it doesn't make any sense i will rather than i worked out like it's going to be more about doing things like i I like the fact that he says like be specific about the one thing don't just write the location like don't just write you will do something give it a time and place specify the place you're going to do that thing then you're obligated to do that thing like even more habit stacking we mentioned that in the previous one then next temptation bundling oh okay this works by lim- linking an action you want to do with an action you need to do oh uh, i don't really have that right now because i'm at a certain point where i feel like okay nah like a lot of the things that i want have long-term effects i don't think there's anything bad that i want that will have like a negative long-term effect it will be fine but like i should really look into this thing because i i literally i'll probably download the worksheets and do it close many and powerful oh yeah i remember this having 
a friend of mine like a former classmate like she has a finance youtube channel and she created this whole like your financial habits didn't fall from the sky try and identify which parts of your entire life like, she's not a friend she's an acquaintance tell your people use your proper words so like, she has a thing about having financial habits like they didn't just fall from the sky you're for example, I consider myself borrowership averse but comfortable with giving money. Like I behave in a manner where I'm like, I give it like if I'm going to give somebody money or give somebody something, I'm very comfortable with that thing being destroyed. If I'm not comfortable with something being destroyed, I will not give it to you. If you like beg for money to like tonight. But I know that once I'm comfortable with something being destroyed, you can ask for it to my sleep. I don't give it down. Then um what else? And that like general behavior and my like averse to borrowing is something that I gained from like my family sense setting, which is something that a lot of people don't want to like, acknowledge the fact that they are becoming more and more like their parents. Like as much as the fact that the parents have quirks that we test, but like we are becoming more and more like our parents. So, like grow up. Then we copy the habits of people around us. Blah blah blah. Oh, and I really like the one he said the law of least efforts. Like everybody is so obsessed with the fact that they are going against the green or they are going to be special. Or they are no, you are going to do what is socially acceptable, which which is very very funny. You are going to do what is socially acceptable, what is not difficult to do. So that'd be fine. So you have to. So in order to use this like time and time and again, have that is known to us make what you want to do socially acceptable meaning that if you want to be the kind of person that works out every day hang out with people who work out every day if you want to be the kind of person that eats like sushi hang out with people that genuinely like sushi if you want to be the kind of person who does a lot of math hang out with a lot of people in the family department of math you'll be fine you know that i'm the way i'm looking how this thing is not like spiking up i have a feeling that this mic is not working and it's freaking me the fuck out but like it'll be fine Next is um what where am I where am I where am I um the Goldilocks rule oh okay everything has to be good the next four steps to start a good habits and break a bad habits to break it because we've been mentioning the good habits substance to break a bad habits you make it invisible unattractive difficult and unsatisfying I think this is all I'm going to be using. Uh, it's like oh yeah i read the atomic habits and blah 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 whatever now let's just gist that's like that, like, like seriously let's fucking gist um what have i been up to i have decided to be dedicated to draw box <laughs> i know i want to skip to the end but i feel like i would do well to construction and i'll be fine because i because I, I have a tendency to look for outlines and, and rather than look for shadows and I think it's very important that you look for the shadows and rather than the lines because I'm obsessed with the lines and it's like the lines don't matter look for the shadows don't explicitly define this as boundary implicitly in book implicitly in that's tautology imply that there's a boundary using shadows so what else okay what else have I been doing well projects have been going fine I need to start my main project. I'm starting next week because we we are going to be starting Pandas next week. So I've decided that I'm going to start my project proper proper next week. Finish the entire thing. Make it as gorgeous as possible. And like modify a lot of stuff from cargo. I have recently become a group leader, which is fun. And I need to stop being very authoritarian because I talk as if my word is law. Which is funny. I only have that output when it's something like an office related something. Because but like in my real life I can be more passive to the people around me because like if I'm going to spend an entire like day with you I really don't have the energy to argue with you but if I'm going to spend a specific time performing a specific task I like to come out on top like I like my word to be near final but then again I'm starting to move in a team so it's important that I push back and understand that my fear of not being heard it's not necessary because other young people who are moving into the corporate space are also worried about being heard which is something that is fine and we'll work together we'll do well together we'll grow in career together and it'll be fine it's not a competition so it has been a personal code of conduct this is a particular chill mellow and boring 
podcast because I didn't have like any dramatic and sad sub story to tell this way. I didn't have like this great philosophical finding. I finished a book on which I kind of agreed with everything in that goddamn book and not everything. Maybe there's some things I disagreed with, but it was insignificant enough that I've forgotten. I forgotten to the point that I needed a freaking article to remind me. But like when I saw the article I was fine. So yeah, it has been a personal code of conduct, have a productive week. And for the end song, I was going to add bad habits because that's why like, this song is like bad habits. But like I've gotten over my bad habits phase. I'm more of like I think I'm going to add a Van Halen song. Like it has nothing to do with habits. But like yeah, enjoy whatever Van Halen song I add. Got to 